that, oh God, yeah. that sounds horrifying. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I know there was a uh, Edward Scissorhands porn. Oh, no. Shut up. Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Guess oh, what it was called. Edward. Don't say it. Uh, <laughs> but it's pretty obvious. Yeah. I know what it is. I'm yeah. guessing he didn't keep his scissor hands because that would have been real awkward. Yeah. All right. Turn into a murder. <laughs> Whenever you're ready because we're on. Oh. Welcome back, everyone, <laughs> to another episode of the GigaHub Weekly Show where we talk about things that matter to us but may not matter to you. I am host one of three. Luis Del Toro. The sleepy, I am, the sleepy Luis Del Toro. I'm sleepy. Yeah, you are. You need some coffee. I do. I am host two of three, Daikaiju Tony. Three of three, Adam Kren. All right, before we go any further, before we continue, what is a slog of a shit? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, before we continue our show, we are going to talk about our wonderful sponsor, Cosmic Comics, the jewel of the Mojave Desert. Uh, we have everything that your nerdy heart could desire, including comics, uh, apparel, of course, toys, statues, uh, all manner of things, board games. Uh, we just got pops, guys. We just <laughs> hopped on the pops train. No, so if you're, no, we didn't. We got, we've had pops. Uh, why don't we show them what we have? <laughs> Speaking before, of, before we go on though, before we show them what we have, we do ship now. So, oh find, heck yeah, find us online. Heck yeah, pick what you like. And where uh, where where can they find us online? Cosmic Comics. Dot Vegas, or you can find us through Comic Hub. Okay, and uh, yeah, oh yes, we ship. <laughs> oh yes, they ship. Of, speaking of pops, we surprisingly have more superhero pops than what's in the Funko location somewhere in Washington. Oh really? Because like I had a customer who come here, was like, oh yeah, you got more superhero pops than the actual Funko like really? headquarters. <laughs> take right. that Funko yeah. headquarters. Take, take that. Yeah. Who needs right, TV cool. show pops? <laughs> 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 All right, what do you got? Speaking of Funko Pops, Creep Show, the, the creep. creep. The Creep. That's a good figure. That's right, a cool, yeah, it is a cool that's figure. A cool, I kind of yeah. want it. Especially how he's turned a comic. Right. This is based off the actual newer show that Greg Nicotero did for Shudder. Yep. Ooh, which, which I'm totally, watch that. totally on board with. I, I, the only part I saw was the holiday special. It was awesome. Nice. Awesome. Yep. That's, what I, that's one of the things I got. What else you I got? I also have this. Lovely little fella right here by Haya Toys. Big Although you may have not heard of Haya Toys, I can tell you in all honesty that it is a very nice figure, a very nice alien big chap figure. If you're not familiar with the term big chap, it was a nickname that they gave to the actor wearing the suit in the original alien. Big mm-hmm. chap, yeah. Because he was very tall, and this mm-hmm. is the original alien suit, not 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 the, not the many movies that yeah. come after, yeah. Yep. And then, of course, brand new D&D last week, Dungeon Master Screen and Dungeoneer's Kit. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very nice. And I kind of want it. <laughs> Do you? And there's a couple. I there's a new book coming out this week, and there's another new oh, D&D book Oh, which one's the out. one coming out this week? Is it uh, Wild Beyond the Witchlight? Yes. Yeah, that's okay. coming out this week. Yeah. Oh, all right. There you go. You can put your order in, or you can come on in yeah. and when uh, we will have them when they release. And they're going to have them here, guys. Get them before they're gone. And I can tell you, in all honesty, if you, if you purchase from an online retailer for a reduced price, you're going to also get a reduced, <laughs> I guess, Banged up, <laughs> where ours will be perfect. Mm, yes, yeah. thanks to me. Yeah, thanks, Tony. All right, yeah. what do you guys great. got? All right, uh, there's a couple of uh, uh, things that I have for you. Um, there's nothing I love more than the air of superiority <laughs> that comes with knowing of something's existence before everyone else does. All right. So, uh, before uh, all your friends start talking about how great Sweet Tooth is on Netflix, you can tell them that you've read the comic book by Jeff Lemire. Nice. We have mm-hmm. nice, beautiful hard covers here. Uh, and uh, we also have Sandman. Right. That's also, for, that's also as a going show. to become a series. Yeah. So, uh, get on this before the series comes out so you can pretend like you knew about it way beforehand. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, again, there are, are several versions of the the Sandman that I saw over there. Right. Uh, one of them is a beautiful, like leather bound yeah. hardcover. It's absolutely gorgeous. It looks like a li- like an eight, like one of those old library books. Yeah. It's beautiful. Anyway, you can get this stuff and a bunch of other stuff uh, along shipped the same. Directly like, to and you, you can get it shipped to you guys. Right. You don't have to go nowhere. It's you just true. get it shipped to your house. It's true. We're right. we're that much closer to becoming the people from the Wally movie. I mean, <laughs> where's my flo- where's my floating chair? Uh, right. Yes yeah. and no. No kidding. Yeah. Mm, I okay. Like it. What, do you what got? little exercise you would get walking to the comic book store or walking around the comic book store? Right. 
All right. They took care of it for you. So you we got Tony? Amazing Spider-Man 75, Scotty Young cover. Great It's cover. Ben Riley with his not-so-new costume. <laughs> right. It's the it's basically a slight tweak of the 90s Ben Riley costume, which was also a very good design. Yep. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah. Basically, cool. Ben Riley's taking the mantle, and yeah. <laughs> That's currently what's going on in the world of the Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. If, if you're listen, if you're into it, cool. I'm yeah. I'm way out of it. Uh, yeah. I think I'm too old for that stuff. Anyway, what? I'm too old to buy single comics anymore. I gotta go do trades. It's the it's the only thing I can do now. Fair I be buying single comics anymore. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we have all this stuff and more. Come on down. Uh, let us know what we can uh, help you with or what you can help you find. And, of course, uh, we now ship, so you Direct don't even have to come to, to the store. You. So if you don't want to talk to Tony, which, <laughs> why? Why wouldn't you want to? <laughs> He's an interesting guy. Um, then you can totally order online and have it shipped to you. That's true. Yeah. That's Do true. come see uh, Tony and Adam, though. They are very lonely. <laughs> Come talk their ear off about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, no, we do have a very friendly staff, and uh, they'll be able to point you in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. So, why don't you lead us into our topic for today. Horror movies. What? Yeah. During Creeptober? How? <laughs> Impossible. <clears throat> We're going to talk about various genres of horror movies, what some of our favorite genres are, and what kind of, what kind of genres scare you, and if that's the same thing as your favorite. Genre, because I can honestly say that my favorite genre isn't the genre that scares me, or I should say the subgenre of horror movie. My favorite okay. subgenre is not the same as the one that actually scares me. Okay. So, uh, nice. Okay. So, what's some uh, what's some genres? You want me to start listing some off? Should I list some off? Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I have to I have to know what you would consider a genre. I guess. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think I, I think genre. I, okay, because I think I have plenty of subgenres right. like. Do you want me to start? No, I, I can go. Okay, go ahead. I, I can give my mm-hmm. s- short list of what is widely considered horror. Of course, you have the standard creature feature. That term came into existence in the 50s with the various atomic horror movies. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, creature features can also... Robot men from Pluto. Right, right. That can also be even broken down more into sub-sub-genres like vampires, werewolves, zombies. Mm-hmm. Um, zombies, I would argue, is almost like a whole subgenre of itself now. <laughs> yeah, there's so many kinds of, right. of zombies. And then, of course, you have ghost stories or supernatural hauntings, that kind of thing. You have mm-hmm. demonic stories, the various movies of possession. Yeah. Um, you what you have what's called strange fiction, which is the term I prefer as opposed to what most people call Lovecraftian, because the truth is Lovecraft himself wrote a very lengthy essay on what he considered strange fiction, which, was, which is what he wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, so strange fiction has to do with you know, cosmic horror, horror beyond our understanding, often but not always from space. <laughs> right. Um, things like that. Um, then, of course, you have torture porn, which really came yeah. into existence. <laughs> Tony's favorite. Within the within the modern day, that sort of came into existence with uh, Saw and the Hostels. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be honest. I'll be Although, honest. to be fair, it yeah. did exist way back when with yeah. movies such as The Hills Have Eyes. Cannibal oh, Holocaust. Con- yeah. Solo yeah. and the 120 Days of Solemn. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'll be honest. Those, uh, those kinds of movies there, like they... To me, at least, they really lost uh, their luster. Like I, I, there was a point where like you were seeking it out out of curiosity, and then after a while, you've kind of seen all of them. Yeah, yeah. And I think I know as a young man, I used to be fascinated with those types yeah. of movies. But as I get older, I'm just like, yeah, I don't need to. Yeah, <laughs> right? like, it's like, I don't ah, need to subject myself. It's not. It's not even. Yeah. It's not like creative or anything. Um, I don't know. Yeah, and yeah. then of course, uh, weird science, which has to do my with, favorite movie, which really dr- no, not the movie, the oh. subgenre, which really drifts into. S- a lot of different things like creature features or even supernatural, like uh, the, um, what's the heck it called? Um, From Beyond, mm-hmm. which is also strange fiction, but it's also, you know, weird science. Frankenstein could be considered weird science. Right. Uh, uh, what's it called? The Phoenix Paradox? No, I don't remember what it's called now. Banshee. Banshee. Um, it's kind of a remake of uh, From Beyond. Oh, okay. But And then, of course, the very popular started really – it didn't start with John Carpenter, but he certainly caused that. He defined and caused that subgenre to blow up as the slasher subgenre. Ah, yes. Which, of course, the maniacs hacking up teenagers who have sex. Those teenagers <laughs> yes. had it coming. <laughs> right, right. And that's that's kind of my list. It's in no way comprehensive. I don't think it covers everything. Of course, I think more than that, though, you really start breaking down into crossovers and combinations and things like that. Right, right. What are some things you guys think of? Or? 
Well, my personal favorite within the creature feature is obviously the kaiju genre, because uh, specifically the 50s, because right. f- back then in the 50s, there was still a spawn of the atomic bomb, and back then the monsters were still kind of scary, especially right. not counting Godzilla, Rodan, because that whole movie... The, I love that Actually, movie. no, the first right. half of the movie... Yeah, Rodan's good. The, yeah. the first half of the movie it's is... It's a shame it's all but disappeared. Go ahead, sir. Rodan? Yeah, all but the spirit. What well, it's not you know you you can you can find a lot of Godzilla movies today on Blu-ray, oh, yeah, but, but Rodan's hard to find. Yeah, oh, it's a good thing I got my copy way way long. Yeah, yeah. I only have it on DVD, and it's not. Oh, uh, you know what? I think I have it on DVD too. Now that I think about it. Anyway, Tony, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> because the way Rodan's presented within yeah. the first half of the movie is, um, there's the bug monsters, but it turns out the bug monsters the are big the ants, food right? for yeah. for Rodan, and right. the whole reveal of, with the giant egg, like that whole scene was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And I think when you talk about Toho or Tokusatsu horror, um, when you talk about the 1950s, I really think that extends all the way up until probably Invasion of the Astro Monsters when movies start feeling more 60s. Yeah. <laughs> Before that, I would say they're very, even though some of those, a lot of them are in the 60s, I think they feel more like the 50 creature features. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what about you? Uh, well, as a kid, and even a little bit now, I was always um, – very freaked out by um I, I don't know what category this will fall under but anything where an inanimate object such as a toy uh comes to life so like your chuckies your demonic toys that kind yeah, of stuff yeah. like mm. that that freaks me out yeah. because that's, you know that's a good i didn't even think of that yeah i mean it's kind of demonic supernatural but it's also a sub sub <laughs> yeah yeah like it's Possessed it's it's basically anything objects. where you take something that is meant to be like inanimate. inanimate or even like innocent like a toy or or like anything like a like a uh, we were just talking about uh, last week or the week before we were talking about um pet cemetery right the, right. Little, the little kid right, yeah. the, the the kid in the movie no like fair daddy. yeah that kind of stuff like really like weird, that throws me out of sorts man it freaks yeah. me out um, <laughs> so not a fan of toys no not no 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 not at all <laughs> not at all um, i mean i've learned to, to deal with it now as Buzz an adult Woody, but as a out. kid uh, i i have such an embarrassing story <laughs> Um, <laughs> that I don't know if I want to share right now. <laughs> okay. I uh, I, maybe later, if at all. Uh, but, uh, like, that kind of stuff really, like, weirded me out. I was always sort of wary of my own toys <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> hey, look it up. Uh, yeah, like, my, uh, hmm. I remember having this weird, um, this is very cute when I look back on pictures of it, but it's, like, this weird, like, stuffed doll with, like, the plastic hands, like, the plastic, Yeah. you know, my mom used to put it on the bed when she would make the bed. <laughs> Um, so like whenever I got a chance, I somebody would, set this doll to evil. I would, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whenever I got a chance, I would like sneak over to it, like I was catching it by surprise, yeah. and I would push it off the bed, and then like I would look to see if it was doing anything, and then I would kick it under the bed, and then I would run <laughs> off. And when I come back like an hour later, my mom had found it and put it back <laughs> on the bed. So that freaked me out because I didn't know she was doing that. Yeah. Um, well, I know what I'm getting you for one of your birthdays. Talky uh, Tina. Talking Tina. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, that's that probably is my l- the scariest one. Yeah. Like th- th- that still kind of freaks me that freaks out. That's out. the one that freaks me out, but it's not it's not my favorite. Is there by a any gen- means. is there a genre of horror that like freaks you out that you just don't? I mean, not necessarily don't like to watch, but definitely makes you feel apprehensive or uh, uncomfortable. In, like terms of stuff that makes that unsettles me. Yeah. Uh Maybe simple ghosts, like paranormal activity type of ghosts. Maybe yeah. because, like... Mm. Um, you can't punch them. I, well, yeah, that's <laughs> exactly my same genre. Like, okay. like, as a per, uh, like, as someone who likes to keep everything in his room organized for the most part, like, the moment I, like, see something... Like, like let's say I have a figure here, right? Yeah. And then, like, I'll leave the room for a second and it moves, for like, slightly. I'll be, I'll be, like, totally freaked out. I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> so what freaks you out? You're even f- apprehensive talking about it. I, I was going to... Yeah, I know, yeah. right? So what freaks you out? The fact that it moved or the fact that you had it meticulously put and someone messed it up? Who uh, would do such a thing to your immaculate room? The f- probably the fact it moved because I sometimes real, I would, like, lock my door. Yeah. Let uh, me meet your dad. Uh, Just messing with you. He's like, hey, hey, hey. what? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's what I, I would totally do. That yeah, super. Na- I, I'm I'm with I'm with Tony. The mm. one that actually creeps me out, ghosts, but even more so, kind of demonic because it doesn't. Y- you can't fight that. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> like of course. 
You can't punch a ghost. You can't. You can't punch yeah. a ghost now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, unless it's like in <laughs> Evil Dead, or just kill whoever the ghost is possessing, and it'll go away. Yeah, <laughs> and I hope I'm not. Yeah, I hope I'm. I hope that, I don't that's have, a that's a I good don't point. have any shining because then it can draw off my power to actually yeah. become physical. That's yeah. a good idea. If they're ever dealing with a ghost, have a ghost possess someone you don't like, and then beat that person beat up. That, beat show, that person. Show, show that show that ghost who's <laughs> boss. Um. Uh. <laughs> The demonic toys. The demonic to yeah, like I think that kind of falls in the same thing, right? Like yeah. demons, ghosts, Kinda, possessions. Yeah. I think I think there's a, there's a pattern here, guys. Right, right. Yeah. We're afraid of <laughs> things we can't, <laughs> things that cannot be explained. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, with a lot of ghost stories, especially like with poltergeists, eventually there's a way to get rid of the ghosts and all that. In the movies, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can explain to me why I find. Movies from like the like the seventies and eighties horror movies a lot scarier than like modern day movies. There's just something about like well when I saw the because right. I saw The Exorcist when I was fifteen. Yeah, thinking like there's no way this movie is scarier than modern movies. And I right. remember watching it and I'm like, oh my god, this movie's scary. Like I was freaked out yeah. by this movie. And I, I don't know. It's maybe it has the the way. That it looks, I, I don't. I'm not sure. I, I, I think, can pinpoint. And with The Exorcist specifically, and I think why some people do not find it scary at all, but other people find it very scary, is mm-hmm. the fact that it's it's presented in an almost clinical sense. There's no. It's it it's almost devoid of artistic cinematography. Mm. It's just it's almost like a damn documentary. Like they just put cameras in the room, so you're just faced with it. It's mm. no, it's it's a. <laughs> you know a, what I mean? Like I it's mean, just it's there. I, I and you see it all. I hope this makes sense. It's like a very gr- it's a grounded ghost story, right? You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's it's almost like you just take this sort of one weird metaphysical thing right. and you just put a uh, like some sort of base to it, like an yeah. actual like re- reality base to it. Right. Yeah, um, and it's just and it's there for you to see. I right. mean, I think that was probably a very smart move. It's it doesn't use more modern cinematography tricks to like lead you into things. It's right. just it's right there. Mm-hmm. It's just very it's on full display. Yeah, and I, and I think that's why it's shocking. Yeah, right. um, and I know a lot of seventies and early eighties movies are just. A lot meaner. They don't <laughs> pull punches at all. No, they don't. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they'll kill kids. They don't yeah, care. Yeah, they yeah. Don't give, they don't give crap. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's pretty rough. I mean, have you ever seen Mother's Day? That's a slasher movie in the early eighties. Oh no, I haven't. I mean, it's. I know Rob Zombie's seen it because uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. Mm. <laughs> right. You can tell is inspired partially by that movie. Movies yeah. like that that are a lot meaner and a lot just crazier. Mother's Day is a lot more like the original. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where it just it's kind of like the cruelty sort of just kind of goes on, right? Yeah, and it, and it can be uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. Right. yeah. Speaking of movies, speaking of horror movies, that's like not afraid to kill off kids. Like I remember, I got the title. It's a Canadian horror movie. It's about giant rats, and in the opening, they eat a baby. Wow. <laughs> oh gosh. And like, I don't think um, I saw that they end up it end up being like a subway full of people, but wow. know, there's like so many big rats all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm talking about rats that are like the size of dogs. Oh, okay. dire rats. Why? Yeah, it sh- I should have. I should know what that is. It seems familiar, but I don't. That's rats, crazy. eh? Hey. That's what it's called. Rats, eh? There's there's rats about here. There's rats about, eh? <laughs> yeah. It's um, not food for the gods. I know food. For no, the gods food for the gods is different. different yeah. movie. Um, is that night of the? No, those are rabbits. Night yeah. of the lepus or lepus. Yeah, those lepus, are lepus, rabbits. Lepus and Doctor McCoy's in it. Yeah. <laughs> Which oh, uh, uh, I don't know. Divorce Kelly. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I thought you meant like Hank McCoy. No. I was like the the guy from the, X Men. Beast. <laughs> beast was it? So that's what scares you. How about your favorite genres? Which I think you probably already listed. I already yours, said mine. Yeah. My favorite genre. Gosh. Um, but we're gonna come back to it. That's <laughs> tough. It's tough. Um, I have such an eclectic taste in in horror movies. I love anything that's got a downer ending. Yeah. I yeah. love anything that has a downer ending. Like it uh, it cuz it oh, so Andy I, Christ was good for you. Huh? And no, that <laughs> oh god, that movie was just depra- it wasn't even fun right, yeah, yeah. cuz some yeah, cuz I like dark, I know yeah. what the purpose of a horror movie right. is, but in some way they're enjoyable, right? Like yeah. I think we years ago you and I had talked about this. I'm yeah. um, like, you get this like this rush of dopamine because yeah. you're feeling the sense of danger without yeah. actually being in danger when you're watching it. Right. So when you see like that downer ending, 
or at least when I do, I'm always taken by surprise that there's a downer ending <laughs> because I'm so used to like all movies having like a nice, neat, happy little ending, you know, nice of bow, some nice little bow. bow. Yeah. So when I see that it ends horribly, like <laughs> it's it's almost like a nice dip. And it's almost like you you fall into a hole and then you bungee right back out. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like. Because once the movie's you don't over, have to stay there. yeah. Once the yeah, movie's over, nice. I'm like, ooh, it's a good thing that I don't live in, in a city that, that had, in, ha- in a city that had to be nuked because they couldn't handle the zombie, <laughs> right. sp- the zombie virus spreading everywhere yeah, yeah, or yeah. what have you, you know. Um, Which didn't really help. No, yeah. it didn't. It no. doesn't. Um, but <laughs> which would because well, this is a good atomic thing. Atomic bombs are hot mm. enough to break down chemical compounds. Right, but that, that's the great thing about that movie is like there was no stopping it. Yeah. yeah, this thing like had a million ways to spread a uh, return of the return of the return of the dead. Yeah, we had, could actually spend all show on that. Ah, that's a great that, movie, I, and I think it does have a lot of fans, but it is underrated. Those zombies are dangerous and yeah. Yeah. scary. Can't, yeah, that's why the multiple sequels are so disappointing. Yeah, you can't shoot them in the head. You can't cut them apart. Yeah, they still still move they around. They just keep coming. Yeah, it's one of those things. There's more ways to and lose fast, than there is and to they win. Think. Yeah, yep. and they're smart. Yeah. yeah, and they spread like the Dickens. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is just. Yeah, it's like it's very bleak, yeah. and it's nice to be able to look into a world like that, and then just pull yourself back up and be like, "Ooh, that was creepy." It's a good thing that's not real. <laughs> right. Um, right. As far as a genre, I, I don't know that I could pinpoint an exact genre that I that I personally like. Um, I, I mean, you take a movie like that, and then you take a movie that's very different, like The Thing. Yeah, you know what I mean, and that's more Which like kind of is a creature. It's feature, really a creature, but it's feature, also but it's, strange it's, fiction. It's mostly yeah, yeah. it's a very suspenseful. Horror, like yeah. it's not the yeah. same as yeah. this. The Return of the Living Dead it you somehow know I mean? transcends common horror. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Or or then you get a movie like uh, like Aliens. You know what I mean? Which is just like it's it's almost like our fear of nature, but in space, right? The things yeah. that we don't understand. Right. Yep. Like I remember that there's. <laughs> What if ants? What if ants were bigger than humans? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and really aggressive, yeah, and they spit acid. Um, yeah. But it, that goes back to, like, depending on the era that you lived in, you had different kinds of horror movies that came out, right? Yeah. Like there was a, yeah. there was like a set sort of thing that you were afraid of, and the fear of like the wild unknown yeah. was yep. a, was a genuine fear, like. Well, ages yeah. ago, right? Like yeah. going into the woods, finding a wild animal, that was scary. Right. This is the same. You're going into space, a new wild frontier, right. finding the creatures that are in space that may or may not want to eat you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing that makes it scary is like an animal, you know an animal is going to be an animal. Yeah. You don't know what a creature from outer space is going to be. They I mean, it's still an animal. It probably, yeah. it probably has a set behavior but that's, pattern. But, but, but we could, don't know what it is. But it could be an animal. Right. It could right. be a sentient being. Yeah, like, right. We don't know. We don't know its behavior. So, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like that, but it's obviously evolved into something that we can now. Because we can obviously go into the woods now and be right. okay. Yeah. Um, we have the tools for that. Although, we like, don't have the tools for space. Yeah. We understand the animals that can harm us. At yeah. least we understand their basic nature and... We have a better like chance that, yeah. of fighting that than fighting the unknown. Right? Although so. half the mystery of Alien and Xenomorph kind of got ruined with later movies. Well, yeah. you'd have to, you know, you have to, because it's as the movies progress. It's like any movie, even honestly, even the Halloweens with Michael Myers. As the movies progress, uh, but what I'm saying is, yeah. as the movie progresses, you understand the antagonist's behavior. It's just like an animal. <laughs> yeah, but you, know, you start to understand how it behaves, how it acts, how it reacts, and it's less scary. So you have to, yeah. as far as movies go, there has to be more things thrown in to kind of make it continue to be scary. But with Michael Myers, like with varying degrees of success, <laughs> with Michael Myers, it came down to or him working for a cult and Michael Myers. Yeah, that was stupid. Being yeah. a, <laughs> like the reason why it kills people is because of uh, when whenever the stars align and they make this uh, symbol, yeah. this symbol in his arm. I'm like. I, I I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> I think that's when movies exactly. start to become the way they are now, which is they're a lot more tame, right? Yeah. The, the, I think the key to a good movie of any a good horror movie of any kind is the uh, the unknown. Yeah. How oh, much yeah. of the unknown is there? Like you cannot some things you just cannot explain. Yeah. And I think that's what fr- that's as humans Ultimately, that's what freaks that's us what, out. Yeah. You're right, like yeah, you yeah. try to explain something. There's got to be a logical explanation. Is there, what about when there isn't? Yeah, what about what do yes. you do then? You can't find I, it. That's what makes it scary. And it has to have some degree of that. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot of Jinji Ito's work because yeah. it, even though Jinji Ito isn't necessarily the best writer, whenever he does write something really cool and freaky, 
that's when it hits like it's really like, cool and freaky yeah like, like yeah. spiral when yeah. everyone in the in the town starts being obsessed with the shape of a spiral to the point where people start morphing into spirals and there's yeah. spirals everywhere yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it reminds me of some of like dean Koontz's work um dean Koontz, a name i haven't heard in so a long time. right dean yeah. he's still writing um so uh Kaiju, is that your favorite, right? Yeah. So oh. why? Why does that appeal to you? Nuclear age kaiju, it's... It's nuclear age specifically? Yeah. So, well, mainly monsters that are a result from the atomic bomb okay. testing. So it's not just kaijus. But why? Why does that appeal mainly to you Mainly because it's a result of... It's a result of people. Like, this is like the after effects of... It. Hubris. Yeah. Right? H- human hubris. I mean, this... <laughs> Whether it can or cannot happen is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a mystery. But I think that that's the fact that we could make it happen as people is probably what freaks people out, yeah. right? I mean, we did make a bomb. Right. We right. did right. set it on somebody, and that right. in itself is scary. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we, who knows what other horrors can come from we it? We set it on the country who created the genre, yeah. Yeah. Or the subgenre. Yep. Anything else you want to say about that? Or? Regarding the kaiju genre? Yeah, the atomic horrors. Atomic horrors... Well, there was a lot of them decide Godzilla, Rodan. Yeah. I want to say uh, them. <laughs> if you come to the American side, you got yeah, them. Can yeah. I, and I can I ask you a question? And if you don't remember, that's cool because I, I don't really remember. But, like, what atomic monster movie was, like, the first one that you watched that, like, got you hooked? Or do you remember? Godzilla. That you can remember. Godzilla. Was it Godzilla? Yeah. Okay. Godzilla did, it fr- did it freak you out or were you just, like, whoa? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The one that freaked me out was Rodan. <laughs> Rodan oh, okay. made me uncomfortable when I first saw it. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Honestly, I think it might have been Night of the Living Dead, only because, and this is what I remember. Oh, another downer ending. Oh, I love it. Only because, I think, and I was very young when I saw that. I mean, like four or five. Night of the Living oh, Dead, and it, and it did not scare me. Believe it or not, yeah. I thought it was fascinating. It scared me as I got a little older, and sure. Then it, but I remember first watching it, like the whole family was like. Watching it in different rooms, and they're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? In the seventies, you know. I can tell um, you. Go ahead. Go but ahead. Uh, I remember. I think I was like, well, why is it happening? Why is it happening? And they kept saying, oh, it's radiation from space. It was a crash satellite. That's what they kept saying. Right. So in my head, I think that was. Wasn't my a meteor? F- no, actually, if you watch the movie, there is no real explanation. Oh, they okay. only suggest that there was a crashed satellite and maybe the radiation Space like it was radiation. one of the suggestions but there is no real hard as to why it was happening right yeah, but in my you know four-year-old five-year-old mind that was probably my first exposure to something i'm like this is cool mm. yeah and then when you talk about kaiju specifically i think it's the idea and this is guillermo del toro's thing too obviously by pacific rim it's the idea of a hurricane like you can't when when a, when, when a monster's on the move all you can do is just get out of its way yeah. yeah, and that's the best you can hope for. Cause right, because if, if it starts to go off, <laughs> oh well. Oh, it's gonna get worse. Yeah. Oh well. I had to. Yeah. I got a so an interesting thing about that movie. Night of the Living Dead was the yeah. first movie that I had saw with a downer ending that really got me hooked on downer endings. Yeah. Um, I remember watching it and not, not feeling scared. Right. Like I was oh, the same as like, you. Oh. I was like fascinated by it. I was like, yeah. this is a cool movie. Yeah. And then when it got to the end and there was the one guy, I forgot what his name was. They had the one guy left and I was like, oh my gosh, he lived. He made it. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I want to be this guy. This is the guy who survived. And then they just, they shoot him because they think he's a zombie. Right. Like that filled my heart with like dread yeah, yeah. and like a gloom that I cannot explain. Like there's like, at least for like 15 minutes after I was like, there's no hope in this world. I, I, re- <laughs> I was going to say, and I remember being very young going like, he is not – he's trying to peek out and be sneaky, and I'm like, that's the bad choice in this situation. Right, like, yeah. even being very young, I remember thinking, like, being sneaky, this isn't the time, buddy. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you should be like, hey, I'm human. Yeah. Hey, I'm here. I'm alive. Yeah. 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 I mean, but I can understand why. Like, he, he didn't know who was out there. Right, You right. know what I mean? And, like, right. the whole, he just spent the whole night trying to fight off right. creatures coming towards the house. So I, I can see why he was being careful. And then he a lot of gunshots. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Have you seen the remake, though, with Tony Todd? Yeah. As- I actually, I, that actually yeah. is very I good. Known. I think it's underrated. But I also think it gets forgotten about specifically because it is a remake. Yeah. Um, And it is... Dif- direct, there are some by, differences. Yeah. Directed by Tom Savini. Tom Savini did direct. I, I did like the ending of that too. Because yeah, it was good. Basically, they needed to nail the 
boards in the wall. They didn't have enough nails. Then right. they're like, he goes down in the basement by himself, pulls out one nail in his pocket that could have probably saved them all. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, yep. I haven't seen that. No. It's, it's more about, uh, if anything, it empowers, uh, what's her name, Moore, which is played by, oh, my God, what is her name? <laughs> I love her. Um, she's in Babylon 5 and on various oh, episodes yeah. of Star Trek. and <laughs> Babylon 5. <laughs> um, the redhead. She was a psychic. She was in a lot of early Romero her stuff, actually. Not, yeah, she was a stunt woman and an actress, yeah. 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 But anyway. She, her version of Barbara was more like. Yeah. more. Well, she started off the same, but once she kind of got out of her shock, she was she ceased being a. Uh, she ceased being a. Uh, uh, just screaming uh, yeah, all over the place. Yeah, she yeah. actually to took action. And, you, and the ending was really good. It was. Have you seen that one? No, not you that sh- version. You should no. watch it because it yeah. is. It's a downer ending in a totally different way. Like she lives, but it's like just her realization of it is just really effed up. Like yep. it's just like, ugh. <laughs> it's kind of grim. Yeah, I would yeah. argue it's probably more grim than the original. Mm. Just because of what it means and the brutality of humanity is kind of what they're trying to get at. Right. Yeah. You know, so. But um, yeah, it was good. Um, what else we got? How about uh, how about good old creature features? You got anything to say about those? Creature features. I mean, we could do a whole show on creature yeah. features, to be honest. Yeah. And I don't mean like necessarily the kaijus. I I'm talking more of the classic American like uh, stuff, Wolfman. like uh, Universal. Uh, yeah. I first off, I love and, those, but I, I hammer lo- monsters. I think oh, I love hammer. those more for like the beauty and aesthetic of like black and white classic yeah. horror movies yeah, than yeah. the fact that they were scary. I'm sure they were scary in their day, but I don't think at any yeah, point that not... I ever watched them were they, that I ever feel they were scary. They were interesting and entertaining. Right, right. And, and just they were beautiful. beautiful. They're, they're beautiful, beautiful movies, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree. I, I do love the Hammer ones a little bit more than Universal's just because of how... Well, first of all, it's in, well. I don't want to say it's in color, but first of all, like it's more graphic. <laughs> yeah, the the hammers really were gratuitous in and a way more grim. for the time. For the, the time, for ex- especially Frankenstein, where Doctor Frankenstein oh himself gosh. is evil, evil. As, as much as I love, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> as much as I love the Universal Frankenstein series because those are all great. Yeah, like the the Hammer Frankenstein's. <laughs> do something different and they're amazing. Have yeah. you seen any of the Hammer Frankenstein? Not the Frankensteins. Oh, no. Doctor Frankenstein is a. I mean, the first movie he's a jerk, but he's kind of repentant. But then after that, it's all downhill. He it's just all, he yeah. embraces. He becomes you know Anakin becomes Darth and like it's on from then. Yeah. He's yep. just a mean sob after what, that. <laughs> Boy, would you call? Would you? Consider... And honestly, the last one, which uh. a lot of people don't think is very good, which is Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. I mean, it's just. That movie's badass. And the monster from hell. It, it's because, I mean, it starts with him running in the Satan Asylum, which is perfect. It, it's yes. the culmination of everything that happens yeah. before. And Peter Cushing actually came back for that one, so he must have liked the script because he actually bailed out of the one before that. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. But yeah, it's good stuff, man. What would you consider Reanimator? Would you consider that a creature feature? Oh, wow, ah. that's interesting. You know, well, Reanimator is a unique sub sub mix of genres, I guess. Sure. It's, it's, it's strange. It's cosmic? It's, would it's you consider strange. it cosmic? Or, well, it's strange fiction. Right, it's strange But it's fiction. also weird science. You know? Right. Yeah. And it is a twist on Frankenstein. Yeah. Um, which arguably was written uh, before even the Universal Frankenstein. So it was written after the book, of course. But it is a variation of Frankenstein. Yeah. It's about an insane doctor trying to trying to control life basically mm-hmm. and as bad as that gets out of control yeah, yeah. um yeah the animator animator if you get a chance yeah though. and herbert west the great thing about herbert west is especially in the movies i'm not talking about the book especially in the movies is and jeffrey combs plays him <laughs> so well yes right? is he's not evil he's just relentlessly like, ambitious. committed ambitious. like yes. it's just he sees nothing he, else he has yeah. no care for human like, life yeah well in the very few times where he's forced to care, it's like he's clearly empathetic. He's an, he's a yeah. human, mm. but if once it's like a, a, once he starts going to his work, it's like all it's just the blinders go on and he sees nothing else. Right, and it's all committed to his experiment. He's not like Peter Cushing's Doctor Frankenstein, who's like really just a bastard. Yeah. Like he's an evil <laughs> bastard. He's just he's just he's just, like, he's just ambitious to the point to right. where he's antisocial. Je- Jeffrey yeah. Combs or Jeffrey Jeff Combs is uh, uh, Herbert West is just so committed. Yeah, it's, yes, it's 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 bizarre and, and awesome. Now, <laughs> an, an, another awesome movie that's based on a Lovecraftian story that has Jeffrey Combs in it is um From Beyond, From which Beyond, is definitely yeah. cosmic horror. <laughs> 
Banshee Chapter. That's what the remake's called. Banshee well, Chapter. Well, there's another version of that story called Banshee Chapter. I suggest if you like From Beyond, try to find that movie. It used to be on Netflix forever. Banshee. Banshee Chapter. It's it's different, but it's based off the same story, and it's actually really cool, too. All right. Um, it's got a really cool sort of subplot with um, the actor that played uh, Buffalo Bill from... Oh, whoa. From, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From uh, Sounds of the Lambs. Uh, Sounds of the Lambs, yeah. yeah. He, plays like a, he plays like a Hunter S. Thompson-like character. It's freaking great. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good, yeah. It's That's cool. Awesome. That's another kind of weird, underrated movie, I think, that just kind of disappeared. Banshee Chapter. Banshee Chapter. It's it's basically From Beyond, which is, I believe, what the story was called. Mm. But um, mm-hmm. speaking of cosmic horror, how about, did you any of you guys see the new uh uh, Color from Space with Nick Cage. I want to watch it. Color from Space. It's it's based on H P Lovecraft, Lovecraft story. story. I have n- I have not even heard of this movie. I'm like next time I see it in a Walmart, really? I'm gonna pick up the DVD. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Is it brand new? Yeah, or? it's pretty new. Yeah. It's like a year, year and a half old. Okay, maybe. yeah, I I think it I'm did. Like out of the loop. I think it did come out right at the beginning of COVID. Mm. I believe. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's good. And what's weird about it is like the first time you watch it, it's like some scenes will not make sense. Right. Like they won't. Like you're just like wait what, <laughs> but then if you rewatch it or thinking about it, what at least in the movie, um, this color or this radiation affects how they experience their own time, Damn. and scenes are out of order. Holy intentionally, like different characters run into each other at different points in their own history. Oh my gosh! Yeah. At least that's my theory because right. when you rewatch, you're like oh that. Now certain scenes do make sense because if like well if she ran into her dad but it was in her mind or in her perception three days before yeah that makes sense why she reacted that way because clearly she should be doing this at this time right like, yeah right yeah. okay yeah, so you it, think yeah, have to kind of good. piece it together yeah, it was good yeah, okay would you good. consider the mouth of madness the the peak of Lovecraftian horror and movies uh, the peak I don't know about the peak um certainly I don't. No, not the peak, because honestly, there wasn't very many good, like ever since then, I would argue, there's been a lot better Lovecraftian style or strange fiction films. Before that, they were few and far between, and most of them were just bad. Yeah, well, um, the reason I mentioned Mount of Madness is because- I do love that movie. Recently, there was a movie that just came out, it was based on a comic book called The Empty Man, and uh, basically kind of has the same plot twist as yeah. the Mount of Madness, and- it's being treated as like, oh, this is a new and innovative like ending for the story. I'm like, yeah. uh, no, it isn't. <laughs> yeah, no, it like, isn't. Like a yeah. character realizing that he's an actual character within a fictional story, right. and his world basically became well, fiction. There was a Will Ferrell movie like that ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> new and innovative, Tony. New and innovative. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right, and and you guys torture porn clearly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> t- t- Tony's all for uh, but, search report. But it's oh, oh god. god. <laughs> I don't even want to get into a Serbian. Yeah. Here's here's all I know about a Serbian film. I read the synopsis on Wikipedia and was like, nope, no thank you. That's no, exactly what thank I did. You. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm like, what's this movie all about? A Serbian film? Oh no. Mm-mm. Like, right. well, okay, Mm-mm. I saw it and I didn't really feel much for it, but I, like, I. I read some comments the director made, like, oh, this is supposed to be it's a yeah, symbolic yeah. representation of how our country treats our people. I'm like, no, you're not. You're just making... You're, you're, speaking, you're, you're just, like, imitating actual snuff films. That's all yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 It's disgusting. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we are starting to run a little long, which is weird because this show went by super quick. <laughs> it sure did, yeah. But uh, one thing I want to touch upon before we go, we don't have to about talk, talk about ghosts and demonic too much because I think that is a genre... That's a subgenre that... Is very repetitive, but there's it's, also it's, it's there's popular now. Some, there's some too, really there's good entries into yeah. it too, even if they are repetitive. Right. Um, but let's talk about real quick the slasher subgenre because yeah. that's a pretty big subgenre that really blew up after Halloween. Right. Yeah. Um, how do you guys feel about the slasher genre? Uh, and depending on can you, can you give me like one or two of your really big standouts that are probably underrated? Oh. But anyway, for, Underrated, how do you I, feel about I, it first? Well, yeah. uh, depending on the quality of it, like yeah. uh, the the way I see slasher films is the more they try adding more to it, and the more they try making it a bigger scaled movie, the less it feels effective. It yeah. is right. For yeah. example, Jason Takes Manhattan, like <laughs> the, 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 the Jason Takes Manhattan that 
filmed in what New Jersey or something? Yeah, only, yeah. And it only had like one shot. Hey, that filming actu- in New York City is expensive. Yeah, yeah. only <laughs> one shot or like one scene that was actually filmed in New York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like they in that one they tried upping the scale by putting Jason into the big city, and it doesn't really feel. It any- actually minimizes yeah. a lot of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I think slashers are. Slashers are strange. They're kind of a strange animal because there's a lot of slashers don't really have an explanation as to right. how or why this creature, entity, whatever you want to call it, Person, is yeah. sort of doing wh- how it's doing, doing yeah. how it's doing what it's doing. Like, how is Jason right. that freakishly strong? Like, you don't know. I mean, granted, yeah. they it's started, a cult, man. Yeah, they started uh, talking about like how he's from hell or whatever, you know, but. Thorn and Donald Pleasant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that, that I, that's another sort of primal <laughs> fear of um, your fellow man, right? Like, yeah. Y- oh, yeah. Y- yeah. Like, this isn't a, this isn't a monster. Really you know, know if you don't, don't really on, know yeah. who this person is or why they're doing what they're doing or how, yeah. even how, but you know that this is possibly another person, but in, in a way that's a lot scarier, right? Yeah. Like, the violent person that you may or may not know, right. like, just sort of coming into their own. Mm-hmm. Like anger and because like yeah. in, the, in the first Halloween movie, what kind of made it scary is that Michael Myers was just like any another person. Just a big dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was like, yeah, this is like in real life, like it could be like any anybody sy- psychotic home intruder. That Which was the whole point of the blank mask. He Which could be anybody. If you've yeah. ever been in a fight with someone who's bigger than you, that's scary. Sh- that's scary crap <laughs> yeah. right there, right? Now imagine that this person who's a lot bigger than you is somehow stronger. You know, like a lot stronger than you are, you know, like freakishly strong, right? Like, how do you fight against something like that? Right, yeah. right. So I, I think there's something to be said about. So a couple standouts. I'll, I'll start off. A couple standouts, I would say. I got two of them. The first one is The Hitcher, and I don't mean the one with Sean Bean because that one's very meh. Um, I'm talking about the one from the 80s with Does he Rut- die in Rutger, that one? Rutger Hauer and C. Thomas oh, Howell. Rutger Hauer? Mm. That movie is just so... I don't know why it's sort of half forgotten about, but that is an amazing film. Um, you know, the Hitcher sort of appears out of a storm, so to speak, and it's just... It's just the twist... I don't want to say it's a twist. Plot-wise and as far as the twist of his character and what his motivations are is just really, really good. Mm. and interesting he's yeah. he's a man with a death wish but he only he's he's almost desperate to find somebody who's worthy to kill him right <laughs> it's just crazy and it's really good and then of course my other one would be um the stepfather with terry quinn oh right yeah. the old one not yeah not the, the again one. the yeah, 80s yeah, yeah, one not yeah. the new one it's just it's cheesy in a lot of ways it's kind of corny it's canadian horror but it's also really good and really creepy mm-hmm. um just because you know he has this family and he's empathetic and he loves them but then when they don't meet whatever weird perverted expectations are in his head of how a family should be he murders them <laughs> he just there's that twist where you don't right. really know what's going on in somebody's head you mm-hmm. know right. yeah um do you guys have any or? oh um Black Christmas. Yeah, Art, yeah. Art the Lee. classic one, right? Black Probably. Christmas. I know it predates Halloween. Is that the one, is that the one with the, 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 the sorority girls yeah. Yeah. getting wanna, murdered by? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That does predate Halloween. Mm-hmm. Early slasher entry. Right. Yep. And um, another one I recommend is uh, Torso, the Italian Torso. movie. Oh, God. I don't know if I've seen that one. Super gory for its time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. It's like. I don't think I've seen that. It's one. borderline yeah, so exploitation levels of gore. I mean, it's yeah. called Torso, it's so. It's from the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll watch some gore. I know, some I know gore it has an arrow release. Tonight. <laughs> Arrow release. On Shudder, guys. It, Arrow has a release? Yeah. All I don't right. know if it's on Shudder. That's the thing. Uh, okay. Right. Do you have any? Um. Yeah. So, <laughs> this entry might be a little weird. Sleepaway Camp. Because <laughs> um, that movie is kind that of bad. M- that movie is, but the bad. ending sort of makes it all worthwhile, <laughs> right? I, I think again, the 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 fear of your fellow man, you know, like that that comes like we were just talking about the um, there's like multiple Jason. levels in that movie, right? right? So <laughs> so like you know you, you fear someone that's like bigger and stronger than you somehow. This is different. This is fearing your fellow man, but, but this it's is, also fearing somebody who's bigger and stronger than you in authority. But this is <laughs> yeah no, but this is like something more unassuming, right? Like yeah. this is the the little the the, the, the young lady girl, yeah. who ends up actually being a, a young man, yeah. you know, who's. But also the people, some of the people in the camp are not good. They're not good oh, people. Not no. good adults. Yeah, yeah. no, not no. at all. Oh. Yeah. Um, but Comically it, evil, actually. Che- cheesy, <laughs> cheesy as that movie is, I think it's very interesting, and I think it's definitely w- worth watching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, of course, the end is just 
unsettling. Yeah, um, it and is. that's mostly it, because of the prosthetic. Yes, yeah, yeah, so it was yeah. prosthetic yeah. head. And yeah. Yeah. Considering like the stuff they tried planning before, Sleep and they, and like camp. this is not going to work. Let's just do the prosthetic head instead. Yeah, yeah. It's the more morally correct thing to do. And it right. does look bizarre. Yes. <laughs> it does. It's it's weird and creepy. It yeah. works and looks creepy. Yeah. All right. Anything else before we get out of here? Because we are we're running long. Uh yeah. Why don't we uh why don't we do you have any recommendations or anything you want to plug before we go? Uh well, uh, Kaiju Ega. That's also Cosmic Horror and. Well, not well, not, really, uh, not necessarily cosmic horror, but um, there's Shin Godzilla. Basically, it's a Godzilla who Great evolves, flick. evolves into whatever. Super Evolver, yeah. And it looks creepy. That yeah. Godzilla looks creepy it's as hell. Creepy yeah. It's more. I don't know, it's creature feature with more of uh, science. Uh, it's creature feature, but it's also. I I would also say it's an evolution of. Atomic horror, where it's like something yeah. we potentially caused. Mm. Oh yeah, and yeah. in Shin Godzilla, it was definitely the result of humans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Godzilla Single Point, which is the anime on Netflix. Godzilla. I still gotta check that out. In that one, he's definitely more of a cosmic being, considering how Godzilla in that show he his purpose is to reverse time, and yeah. mm. at the same time, he gradually turns the world into like him. <laughs> Like now this is this, this is the newer anime on Netflix, not the anime trilogy from a few years ago on Netflix that mm. are kind of eh. dull. <laughs> yeah, like and forgettable. So like when Godzilla starts altering the world, the re- the sky is red, the sea is red. Like plants yeah. with the scales start growing on buildings. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. How about you? you got anything? Uh, recommendations? Yeah, I mean anything I've said is all things I enjoy. Your sleepaway camps right. and and whatnot. Um, uh, Reanimator, of course. Uh, yeah. Return of the Living Dead. There's I mean, so yeah. Many, yeah, there's so many, so many really good ones. Like most, most of the horror I, I seem to enjoy are mostly from the '80s and before. Yeah. Um, a lot of the new stuff, I I can't really get too much behind. Doesn't really. Anything by John Carpenter is good. Too. Anything by John Carpenter is good. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Even um, even the not so good stuff is still pretty good. Right. Yeah. I think the fog is underrated. It's it's oh, simply just awesome. a it's yeah, simply just great. a variation of a haunted and house. Adrian it's Barbo. more of a haunted yes. haunted town. Yeah. Mm. Adrian mm. Barbo. Yeah. Adrian Barbo. Yeah. Uh, Whereas I like to say the John Carpenter Halloween marathon is right. actually Halloween one is Halloween. Yeah. Yes. Halloween two is actually uh, the fog. <laughs> Halloween three is the thing. Halloween four is actually Halloween three, right. because that was his original view or his original. That would be my recommendations. I'll just throw that in there. I in that since order. I got off on a tangent. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'll put. Uh, I'll make an official order. But uh, basically, he, the Halloweens were supposed to be like an. It was supposed to be an anthology series of mm. different scary movies. Mm-hmm. You know what so, we didn't, talk which he about. tried to regain in Halloween Three, but it just didn't right. work. You yeah. know, what we didn't talk about that. Uh, I think is is it's criminal that we didn't is is Japanese horror. Yeah, uh, we that's didn't true. really get into that. House I mean, that might be house. Yeah. That might be Only something that we can talk about at some other point. But um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like most, uh, they're they're very good at sort of. That human nature type of horror, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. oh yeah, definitely. The, the, like Onibaba. If Onibaba yeah. is in HBO Max and it has a pretty screwed up ending, yeah. uh, you gotta see it for yourself. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what are your what are your favorites, guys? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah. If you could hit the like and subscribe button or unlike. Whatever. Yeah, if you, if you like us, yeah, yeah. like us. But yeah, but if you us, don't like us, yeah. don't like us. If we didn't, we yeah, need yeah. it. If there's we a horror it. movie that we didn't talk about that you uh, think so we should have talked about, there is so many. Uh, but yeah, drop this us a show, comment. This show could be like four hours and long. Like, yeah, and <laughs> like for sure. Yeah. And let us know. You know what would be fun, I think, yeah. would be like a live stream with a horror movie. I, that we, would do, be fun. we do want to do one. We should probably talk about that once this show's over. Yeah. Yeah. Because I do want to do one in the next few weeks. It just seems like Halloween's coming up fast. Right. We should probably probably talk about that. Let's, let's, let's watch West well, Craven Swamp Thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The beauty of horror movies, and I don't know if you know this, uh, you can watch them whenever. It's like a birthday cake. You don't yeah. just get it for your birthday. You That's can get true. it on days when it's not your birthday. They don't yeah. even ask. Yeah. You know, uh, it doesn't have to be Halloween, <laughs> it doesn't to, have to, be Halloween to watch a horror movie, so yeah. we can watch one for fall. Right. Um, yep. like anyway, uh, anyone's got, uh, you guys got any plugs before we go? Oh, yeah. Um, be sure to check out Toku Titan Cast and... Um, Nerd Cage Live, two right. other live stream shows that I'm in at, and uh, yeah. Tpublic.com slash GoFenris. Oddity Collectibles got some cool t-shirts. Uh, 
Hoping to have some more soon. Yeah, eventually. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my near uh, future has changed so drastically over the last six months and continues to change with one surprise after the other. Yeah. So uh, I got to see how that goes. Okay, cool. So. Uh, so all this week and probably next week, I'm going to be on uh, <laughs> Diablo 2. Find me on Battle.net. <laughs> playing oh, remastered. So let's, like, guys, let's play Let's play Diablo 2 Resurrected. Right. I kind of want to get it, yeah. I have it. It's Nostalgic. great. Nostalgic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Besides that, yeah, I don't got anything else going on. Nope. All right, guys. All right, so uh, we will see you guys next week. Say bye, everybody. Thank bye. you. Good night. Good Goodbye. night.